Hi guys, uh, sorry for the lack of having like a professional setup here, but I wanted to go over some equations with you. So I know my, when you see my videos, I'm always talking about black holes and I'm talking about how it shows where gravity comes from and how you unify gravity um, with quantum mechanics. When quantum mechanics is describing probabilities of things occurring and uh, general relativity is describing the curvature of space time or gravity at that point. And so in all my videos, you'll see these little spheres that are glowing and they have these little arrows that are called quantum state vectors and those quantum state vectors are spinning inside of those little spheres. Those spheres are called qubits or block spheres, B-L-O-C-H spheres. It's how you encode superposition onto a two-dimensional uh, sphere or surface. And so... I wanted to show you how that how we do that real quick. So it's not super math heavy, but there's a little bit here. But even if you don't understand the math, you'll you'll understand the concept of it. So space time is composed of qubits, and these qubits are just these little like x y z axis, and you can think of them as being made out of light. And the radius, how far from here to here, is one. Okay, so that's called the unit circle. So these are basically just little unit circles. Where, each, where the radius is one Planck length. Now, so you have a field of these qubits, like a lattice of qubits, a grid of qubits like this. And on these qubits, little bits of light that are called quantum state vectors are being emitted. And that light that is emitted is something called Hawking radiation. It's a special type of light that is emitted from the boundary of a black hole. And it's emitted at exactly the speed of light. So imagine, when I, so now these, this, uh, these bits of Hawking radiation that are emitted, they define velocity and probability using just the speed of light itself as a benchmark. And this is how they do it. So imagine right here, the center of this little grid or this little axis, imagine we have a beam of light that shoots out for one, for the distance of one at a 60 degree angle. And at the exact same time, we have a beam of light that shoots from the origin directly on the x-axis, which is this. They've both moved, say, one Planck length, and at the exact same speed, at the exact same distance, and in the exact same amount of time. But if you ask how far has this beam of light that has moved one moved relative to the beam of light on the x-axis, and it's the cosine of 60 degrees. So the velocity component that is encoded by a little quantum state vector at an angle of 60 degrees is the speed of light, which is just the radius of one. So the speed of light times the cosine of theta, which is the cosine of theta is just how far this little beam of light has moved compared to a beam of light on the x-axis. So the velocity component in the x direction is c times the cosine of theta, and that's just that's actually in Einstein's work. Now, when we we can ask what velocity does that encode in the y direction? So if we look at it, we say how far has this beam of light at a 60 degree angle moved relative to the y axis? That's the velocity component, which is v y in the uh, y direction is just c times the sine of theta. So that's how these quantum states being emitted as, as Hawking radiation at the speed of light on a qubit uses the speed of light to encode velocity components. Now if you look at the angle of that uh, quantum state vector on the qubit, right down here, if you put in the angle for theta right here, it gives you the probability. So the, basically the probability of this qubit collapsing into a zero or a one or collapsing into a spin up or a spin down state or constructive or deconstructive interference. The probability of that happening is also encoded in the angle of this quantum state vector. So the probability, when you see a, a quantum state vector on a qubit at this 60 degree angle, but creating constructive interference or being spin up or, uh, or flipping to a one in a computer, the probability is the cosine squared of this angle divided by two. That gives you the probability of spin up. And this is directly 
related to and shows the origin of the Schrodinger equation. These are probability amplitudes. The probability that this qubit will collapse into a zero or spin down or have destructive interference is the sine squared of this angle of theta divided by two. So that gives you the probabilities. So that shows that when we have a quantum state vector on a qubit, it uses the speed of light, the most fundamental thing in the universe, to define velocity, and it also uses the angle of that speed of light relative to the qubit axis to define the probability that that qubit will collapse into a zero or a one. And so now imagine one Planck time later, one moment later, the universe is this grid that is composed of these qubits, and these qubits each have little spinning vectors on them. Now imagine, so now we've, we've defined velocity right here. Now imagine one moment later, there's a new quantum state vector that is emitted on that qubit, and this time it's emitted at a 15 degree angle. Well, over here, the cosine of, uh, of 60 degrees is like 0.5. So when you look at this beam of light relative to a beam of light here, even though they've both gone the same distance in the same amount of time, this one will appear to be moving half the speed in the x direction, because even though it's moved the same distance, it's moved it at a different angle. So the velocity that it appears to be moving at relativistically in the x direction is half the speed of light. Well, right here, the angle is now 15 degrees. So how far has this beam of light moved relative to the x-axis? And it's the cosine of 15 degrees, which is about 86% the speed of light. So as you can see here, even though there's, it's moving the same distance, here it encodes a velocity of c times the cosine of 60, which is 0.5. So here it appears to be moving at half the speed of light. Here, when the angle in the x direction, here when the angle changes to 15 degrees, it appears to be moving relativistically at 86% the speed of light. Well, that gives you a rate of change of velocity. And the definition of the rate of change of velocity in calculus is that it's acceleration. Acceleration, the definition of it is it's the rate of change of velocity. So now we are defining velocity with the speed of light, the most fundamental thing in the universe. And the rate that that angle changes is describing acceleration, and it's geometrically describing curvature, which is gravity. And Einstein proved that acceleration and gravity are equivalent and indistinguishable, and that is curvature. And so Einstein, what basically he has de he developed was this thing called an Einstein vector tensor field. It's like a little gr grid, just like these Planck qubits. And on this grid, at each little point in the grid, there's little arrows, and the direction that those arrows point, that is describing the curvature of gravity at that point, or the curvature of space-time or the gravitational field. Quantum information holography is saying absolutely Einstein is totally correct, but we can enhance Einstein's quantum state, I'm sorry, we can enhance Einstein's uh, vector tensor field into a quantum state vector tensor field, where it's the exact same thing, but we're saying that those little arrows that he's saying describes curvature, they also describe velocity and they describe probability. And that's what bridges quantum mechanics and relativity. It shows that the universe, as a holographic projection, contained within the curvature of space-time, the shape of, of space-time, is code that is equivalent to zeros and ones. The curvature of space-time is the code. It's how you write code with holograms, and those that the shape of that hologram is equivalent to a superposition of zeros and ones. So this shows that the universe is a quantum computer. It shows where gravity comes from. Uh, it demonstrates a lot more than that, but the, the biggest thing I wanted to show you is that this is how you describe velocity components and probability. And that from the rate of change of those, gravity emerges. But what's one of the things that's really even more amazing about this is what it shows is that when you take one sn snapshot of a quantum state vector tensor field, just this grid of these little block spheres, qubits, with little arrows of light spinning on them, 
when you just take one picture, it just gives you the angle of the arrows on each qubit. Well, that angle describes velocity, and that angle describes probability, and that's called instantaneous velocity and instantaneous probability. But you need two picture frames to get a rate of change of acceleration. So to have to define velocity and probability, you only need one picture frame of the universe. But you need a picture frame and another picture frame to give you a rate of change of velocity or curvature. And that's gravity. So what it means is that gravity is not fundamental. Gravity emerges from the rate of change of the information and from the information field. Information is what's fundamental. And gravity in space-time is an emergent behavior from it. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't go on too long, and I'll try to get some uh, more professional setup here sometime in the near future. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.